Hi there, Park. I'm I'm very very happy to have you on this on this program today. Um, Hi, Lucas. It's an honor to be here with you, man. Yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to our conversation. I want to introduce you a tiny bit for the people uh, who are who probably have never heard of you. I mean, you you have a well known podcast, but pro probably most people will not have known, heard of you. <laughs> probably, so, I think you're probably right. <laughs> probably right. Uh, so for everybody who's listening for the first time, that's Park Park Howell. Uh, he's in the business with that shirt he ha he's wearing, the business of story. That's all about bringing together the worlds of business and storytelling. And I've done a course with him. I was very, very impressed with his approach. And I wanted to ask him a few questions about it. So that's why we're talking. Anything <laughs> else you want to say about you personally? <laughs> you know, I mean, it was a blessing to meet you earlier this year. That was a cohort we did in June. And I typically, you know, train and teach large organizations and so forth. And so we did an, uh, uh, an open course yeah. you know with but 20 people just like you from around the world any different industry it didn't matter and they came in and you were there and you were one of our top students i mean you understand and you grasp the abt i know we'll be talking about that in a minute but uh yeah it was just a pleasure meeting you and that's what i do i've been in the branding advertising marketing world for almost 40 years uh, but i really in the last 15 to 16 years have been studying story and teaching it to people on how to use it to define your brand to make a sales point very clear to uh you know focus your long-form communications and presentations right down to <clears throat> excuse me um you know increasing the engagement of your social posts by four to ten times i mean it's really amazing what story can do when you use it right and that's what i do I consult, teach, coach, and speak internationally on the power of story. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I'm very glad that you ran the cohort course because for me, it was a chance to to experience it without being part of a huge company, which I'm not. <laughs> and I probably will never be because I don't think I'm very good at being employed. I'm not, you and I very, both. Very, <laughs> not very good at that. But uh, that's another story. Yeah. So you're coming from the branding advertising world and you've, you've, increasingly focused on story why story well yeah so i was running my ad agency in phoenix arizona i launched it in 1995 and i really enjoyed the first 10 years of running it and that was really still pretty traditional advertising tv radio print outdoor and it was so much fun because that's what i was raised in and we could tell stories on tv and in radio commercials and we just had a blast doing that but then, you know, like everybody else in the early 2000s, I saw a complete change, a paradigm shift on how our brands communicated. I would tell them, you know, you used to own the influence of mass media, but now the masses are becoming the media through social media <laughs> and so forth. And they own your story. And boy, it's just gotten louder and more obnoxious ever since, hasn't it, in the last 20 years or so. But I realized that the branding and advertising work we were doing at the time started losing its punch, that we had to change with the times. And I was stymied, Lucas. I didn't know what to do. I mean, I was just learning social media like every other ad agency owner. I was seeing this din of absolute nonsense and noise on there. And I thought, where's the creativity? Where's the storytelling? What's going on? And I went looking for an answer and I went to Hollywood. I mean, our middle child, our son Parker, was going to film school at Chapman University. This is now 2006 that he enrolled there. And I said to Parker, I said, send me your books and your recorded lectures when you're done with them, since I'm paying for them, because I want to <laughs> know, does what does Hollywood know about storytelling that we marketers and you know, leadership communicators need to know? Well, that's when I was first introduced to Joseph Campbell, America's foremost mythologist, really the world's, one of the world's foremost mythologists who identified the monomyth or what's you know popularly known as the hero's journey. And when I saw that framework, my branding mind kicked into play. It was like, this is like the perfect recipe to create brand stories, brand narratives, brand strategies. How come... We in the marketing world have never been taught anything about the hero's journey. So mm -hmm. I wrote my first book, Brand Bewitchery, because I took the hero's journey and I boiled it down to these 10 steps called the story cycle system. 
And this was late 2000 and 2008, 2009, started using it <clears throat> to craft brand stories. And the very first one we did for Clinica Adelante helped grow that organization by 600% because they got their story so dialed in. They, it helped them attract the right patients, the right doctors, the right staff. You know, Lucas, they even shut down all of their advertising and PR because they didn't need more patients. They were just streaming into them. That's when I knew we were onto something. And that's when I started doing a real deep dive into any number of different storytelling frameworks, landing on the three that we teach today. And now all I do is I wrapped up my ad agency. All I do is consult, teach, coach, and speak on the power of story and how you can use these proven frameworks in all your communications as you learn in June with that open cohort. Yeah. So number one, it makes me really think about why don't people learn about things like the hero's journey and these things? And my, one of my guesses would actually be that there's kind of an arrogance amongst the business world of we don't really need these psychological things. We can figure it out differently. But in the end, it all comes back to psychology. And actually, the hero's journey is a deep psychological principle. So, yeah, it just makes me wonder about that disconnect in our world. Yeah. But but. So maybe sticking with your first example. So you you dove into the hero's journey, you dove into storytelling, and you had that first clinic that you did a story-based ad campaign with. Now, how how could somebody who has never heard of storytelling in business think about that? Because if I imagine that, I'm like, okay, so storytelling for a clinic. What what does that even mean? What 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 kind of story would a clinic be telling that yeah. is that is valuable for marketing what kind of story is that we're, we're talking well, let about. me give you the quick backstory on clinica adelante by the time i started working with them it was 2009 and at that time they were a 33 year old community clinic here in arizona which means they provided health care services to anybody and everybody regardless of your ability to pay um, back then, a lot of their patient, uh, patients were the field workers, the, the Mexicans that were working in the fields in a very rural uh, areas outside of Phoenix proper. As Phoenix expanded, those farms were sold off uh, to residential developments. And some other legislation happened that made this health care harder for these immigrants and these field workers to take advantage of. So in order to save the entire organization, Clinica Adelante had to reach out and be able to bring in paying patients. Now, the big hurdle here is why would a paying patient wanna come to a free community clinic and pay? Because they're gonna think that the doctors aren't as good, the services aren't as good or whatever. Well, Avin Sate Tafoya, the CEO at the time, knew that that was gonna be a hurdle so she went out and she attracted the top, you know, best family doctors and pediatricians and whatever and brought them in. And we reframed the story instead of calling it Clinica Adelante that had that decided, you know, ethnic bent to it. They thought that they would, you know, be too focused on just the Hispanic community. Um, changed the name to Adelante Healthcare. Adelante in, in Spanish means moving forward, advancing. <clears throat> so we changed it to Adelante Healthcare. And we gave it this whole story theme around sustainable healthcare. Now, in the late 2000s, sustainability was just starting to take hold in purpose-driven brands. It was very much in its infancy. So we built the three pillars of sustainability, and that is number one, sustaining your individual healthcare with the finest practitioners you're going to find in Arizona. Number two, sustaining um, the ability to have this health care regardless of your ability to pay. So we're still going to be able to provide the free services, but it only if we bring in paying patients as well to help offset the cost of that. And then the third pillar was the sustainability of the organization, how they operated more green, more sustainable, even how they took care of their finances. So they are, were a sustainable organization. So it became Adelante Sustainable Healthcare. Now, 
with that, that automatically started attracting all the kinds of doctors that really love the sustainable mindset in. Some of them left that didn't buy into it. They weren't a part of the story anymore. Um, they went on to build four completely lead certified sustainable clinics in Arizona, the very first platinum lead certified clinic in the entire country of America. So Avene really grabbed this idea and the story around sustainable healthcare off of these three pillars and told that story to her team, to her board, to the doctors she was you know, trying to recruit in, and then of course to the patients. And like I said, they ended up growing over the course of about five years by 600%. And Avene will say it's because we got focused on that sustainability story and we told it consistently across the board to all of our different audiences. Yeah, so so basically what I get from that is the story element in this is all about they are a clinic that has a backstory and they need to change because they need more paying customers. Right. But those paying customers have the problem of why on earth would they come there? So they have to find a story that answers that question, why would they come there? And they find that story with saying, we're not this cheap, free thing that everybody can come to and you come to even though you pay. But rather than that, we are a completely different kind of clinic and we're oriented towards being sustainable. We want the best health care for you in that. But we also want to provide sustainable free care to those who have no money. And we want to have a, an organizational structure that actually sustains all of that for the broader community. And you are a part of that if you come to us. Absolutely. You so that's it. that's the story. So now we leveled them up <clears throat> from being just a free community health center into a health center that stood for and stands today <clears throat> for sustainability. And that's yeah. a much bigger calling, a much bigger story than uh, just being a healthcare. And Excuse we're me, actually, <laughs> no, no worries. I guess I Maybe. need them. <laughs> do, 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 you, do you have some water? Do you want to take yes, a moment? Yes, I do right here. Thank you. <laughs> so, and, and in that, actually, the, the clients, if they come, they are part of the bigger narrative. They are not just, oh, I go to this clinic, but actually, I choose to go to this clinic because I want to support what they stand for. Yeah, and I want to be a part of the solution that solution yes. of sustainability around healthcare. So yeah, so they now become an active member, an active participant in that story. And that's what you wanna do with all of your storytelling is you wanna be able to tell that story from your audience's point of view and to get them to come in and participate in that story. And then it's your job as the storyteller to deliver on all of those promises you make in your storytelling of how you are going to deliver a brighter tomorrow for them if they only will come and work with you today. Yes. So storytelling and marketing is not a one fix all and we just tell a story and then people come, but actually you tell a great story. That story then puts demands on you and you then have to fulfill those demands to actually make the story come true. <laughs> yeah. So it needs the ful fulfillment. Well, you know, Lucas, so uh, Jeff Bezos from Amazon fame, said your brand is what people say about you when you're not in the room. And I would like to revise that. And Adelante Healthcare is a good example of it. I think it is your brand is the story people tell about you when you're not in the room. And if you don't control that story and have it completely dialed in from an overall brand narrative standpoint, like Avene did with Adelante Sustainable Healthcare, then people are going to make up their version of your story. And it will not be the story you intended unless you intentionally tell them that story and help them spread your story with their world. If you intentionally tell them the story and when they interact with you, they realize it's true. Yep. Because if you tell them a story and when they interact with you, they realize it's bullshit. They won't tell yeah. your story. <laughs> oh, you'll be dead. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So absolutely right. Maybe maybe jumping from this point. So storytelling. This is the first example of what you did. And I know nowadays most of what you focus on is focused around the ABT. Yeah. What's the ABT? All right. So real quick, the reason why this is is when I teach the 10 step story cycle system, it's complicated. And I find that in the business world, people want quick fixes. <clears throat> they 
they don't necessarily want to become story theorists. They're like, dude, just show me how to do this. So as I was teaching this and I realized that I learned about the and but therefore from my now good friend, Dr. Randy Olson, this is back in 2013, I looked at the ABT framework, which stands for and but therefore framework as sort of the holy grail for branding because it enables you to take a very complex message, simplify it, make it compelling so that your audiences, be they prospects, customers, colleagues, shareholders, the communities you serve, whomever, that they understand you immediately. And when I saw this setup problem resolution dynamic, the ABT, I'm like, could it really be that powerful? And then I started doing some research on it and found that this framework, the ABT, shows up in the very beginning with the very first recorded story of Gilgamesh. You see this same story framework. It uses the three forces of story of agreement, contradiction, and consequence, or setup, problem, resolution, or act one, act two, act three. But it's just a fabulous way, these three words, uh, to give you a template on how to communicate using these three forces of story and anything as short as a tweet to an email that you actually won't get ghosted on, get people to actually respond to because you're tweaking that limbic cause and effect pattern seeking problem solving brain with this um, to your long form communications, to your landing pages, anywhere that you need to have a message land right the first time every time in under 15 seconds. Well, as you've experienced, Lucas, the ABT is that framework. We call it the DNA of story because once you get the and but therefore down, the rest of storytelling in its longer forms becomes a lot easier. So so the ABT, and I want to slow down around this to for yeah. people to actually who don't who've never heard of this to be able right. to get it. So the ABT is a framework and the ABT standing for and but therefore giving you a chance to or forcing you to focus on your core story that you're telling and maybe if i uh, and i abalante is that what they're called Adelante. The, the, Adelante. Yeah. Uh, so if i were to try to make up a, an impromptu abt here it's a you're looking you need a doctor and you're looking for the best doctors you can find and that's but, your statement of agreement yes, that's your statement that's agreement. of agreement you're trying to stay positive and paint that shared vision of what a better tomorrow looks like from the point of view of your audience. But most doctors and health clinics are shittily run, expensive, and are creating more problems than they solve. That's the that's the problem. Therefore, be part of the sustainable future with Atlante Healthcare, where we not only have the best doctors, but we make sure people who don't have the money can pay for it. And we have a business model that allows our doctors to thrive. Yeah. So you could even start, therefore, be part of a healthy, sustainable future, both your own health and the health of our planet with Adelante Healthcare, where we are focused purely on the sustainability of our practice and the health of our patients, regardless of your ability to pay, something yeah. like that. But yeah, you could even play off that healthy, sustainable future. Yeah. So that would be the the ABT and but therefore. Yeah. And by focusing on this ABT so much, what does that allow us to do with our marketing brand, with our with our communication? Yeah. Well, there is, as you know, so much noise out there, Lucas, that what the ABT does because it's using these three forces of story of setup, problem, resolution agreement, contradiction, consequence. It plays to that meaning-making device apparatus in our brain called the limbic brain. It is the subconscious amygdala hippocampus that takes in all of the stimuli and information, sorts through it, and tries to make meaning out of it, really for one goal, and that is survival of our being. It's like, okay, what's going on here? Is this fight, flight, freeze, or is there an opportunity here? What, what should I be paying attention to? When we bombard it with all of the crap that's on social media these days, all non-narrative communication, it just starts swatting things away because it doesn't want to have to burn the calories to try to figure out what in the hell is being spoken to it. 
when you use the ABT, you are delivering this content in the form the limbic brain loves. Give me a setup. Okay, problem. I've got this as a learning device. I've got a problem. So now teach me, how do I overcome this problem? Oh, with your solution. So that's where we have found that the ABT is so powerful. It hacks through the noise and hooks into the emotional heart, the center of that subconscious brain of your audience. And <clears throat> that's why and use it when you use it like with well, tweets or X's, you call them now. I don't know what you even call them now, or Instagram posts or whatever. Do an A-B test. You know, put a put a post out there as you would normally write it, and then do the same post out there in the format of and but therefore, and you will see your engagement in that ABT post become decidedly more effective. And there is just something about that core structure. Agreement, contradiction, consequence that, again, our limbic brain adores because we make it easy for it to make meaning out of our messages. So, yeah, so the people are trying to make sense. They're trying to make sense on multiple levels, consciously, but also unconsciously. And basically, if we go back to the Alante, I still don't fully know how to say that, but <laughs> to, the, to that, <laughs> to that, uh, to that, the question you asked there, why would the people who have the money come to this clinic? That's the question they have. And they have that question consciously, but they also have that question unconsciously. And we need to give them a good and easy to understand reason why they would come there. And the easiest way to give them that reason is in this, you want this, but you're struggling with this, here's a solution. And we are the solution. So that's basically what the ABT does for us. It won't, it, forces us to focus on what do people want, what are the problems they're, they're struggling with, and how do we help them solve that? Absolutely, from their point of view. So I was doing work with the Home Depot. Do you guys have Home Depots over there? No, we, we, ha we, have, we have Home Depot-ish stores. Okay, so yes. you know what I'm talking about, those yes. big, gigantic home improvement retailers. You buy all your, for, it's like one gigantic hardware store, if you will. And I've done a lot of work with them, their internal sales teams, training them this. And one guy asked me, he said, Park, what's the shortest ABT that you know of? And I go, oh, that's easy. You communicate and care, but bore. Therefore, tell a story. <laughs> so there's an ABT in like 10 words, eight words, 10 words. You communicate and care. That's our shared statement of agreement. Yeah, that's exactly right. But here's the bummer. But you bore. Plot twist. Oh, my God, you're right. I am boring. What do I do about it? Therefore, tell a story. Now, that in and of itself is so basic. It will it delivers a punch, but a, a more of a light tap. Now you could expand it, you know. As a sales and marketing leader, you know how important it is to connect on a visceral level with your audiences. And if you use the right storytelling at the right time, then you can have that prospect engagement that leads to a lifelong customer. But you're not connecting because storytelling is difficult. No one has showed you how to use a proven simple framework to make it happen in your life. Therefore, imagine 10xing your sales when you start applying the and, but therefore agile narrative framework that hacks the noise and hooks the hearts of your audiences immediately, every time. So there I took you from a very small site, Goldilocks, a little tiny, small baby ABT to get your name or your, your thoughts around what are you solving for? And then you can expand it. And in telling you that last one, it's not truly a story in and of itself because there's not a central character. You know, doesn't, there's not a time, place, mm -hmm. something happened, whatever. But it uses the three forces of story of agreement, contradiction, consequence that, again, our limbic brain loves to make meaning out of. And I, and I think that's, that's probably a sticking point around this, how to talk about this stuff. Because if, if we're staying technical and people know the vocabulary, you can say, oh, that was an ABT. And people would say, oh, yeah, that, that was an ABT. But again, most people don't know what the ABT is. So you then would say something like that was, this message was devised using the basic narrative structure. And then, but, but then people immediately will think of, oh, so it's a story. You're telling a story about 
somebody with a central character, et cetera, et cetera. So it's it's kind of like we're, we're using the principles of storytelling without having to tell um, tell something like a, what, what would be the word like an anecdote or yeah. like a like a simplistic story which is actually something that i see a lot of people do in marketing that i find usually quite awkward when they're like oh this is heather 34 years old heather had these problems I'm like <laughs> Where, whereas with the abt we can we can use the same structures of conveying information but without having to be in the explicit story frame. Yeah. Well, let me let me give you a one-two punch of the ABT. And this is the way I love to use it, Lucas, as you know, is I'll use it to set the stage for my audience so that they know what they're, I'm talking about. And then I'll share a little anecdote that proves out the point I make in my ABT. And I can do all of that in under 90 seconds using these two frameworks on an audience and usually quite a skeptical audience to be able to come through. So for instance, you know, the ABT is remarkably powerful, but it has a number of skeptics. So let me tell you about Sarah. I was working with this large veterinarian organization last year and with their sales and marketing team. And Sarah was a young writer on their team. After our first session, when we kicked off our second session, it was all virtual. She raised her hand and she kind of said to me, sort of defiantly, Lucas, she said, Park, you know, I'm a journalism major and I apply the you know, my practices, my journalism wisdom to my work here. And I can see how the ABT might work, but I'm not going to use it because it feels too, too stilted to me. Therefore, I'm just going to keep doing what I've always been doing, keep writing the same old way. And I started laughing. And I looked at the group in the Zoom and they all kind of looked at me weird, like, what's he laughing at? Even Sarah was like, why is he, why does he think that's funny? Well, I thought it was funny because I thought she was playing a joke on me. She did not realize. And then I realized she did not realize that she used an ABT to tell me why she wasn't going to use an ABT in her writing. And when I pointed that out to her, she started laughing. So did everyone else. She didn't even realize she had done that. And I said, you see, Sarah, once we put the logic and reason brain aside and look at how our brain really likes to take in messages, it's through something as simple as the and but therefore and you used it on yourself to tell me why you weren't going to use it and she just cracked up and it was a very 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 powerful point for everybody else there so if you being anyone watching or listening to this show are skeptical this this three word uh framework can't possibly work start trying it and you're going to learn as Sarah does. It's very powerful. In fact, it's ingrained, it's embedded in our psyche. And that was, I think, a very skillful example there <laughs> of using the ABT, but I fear that a lot of people listening have missed it. Therefore, let me break it down for a second here. <laughs> so Fair enough. You, you started off with saying A and the ABT is very powerful, but there are many skeptics. Therefore, let me tell you a story. This was Sarah, and these are some of her characteristics, but she didn't want to use it. There, uh, but she she thought she was not going to use it. Therefore, she told you she was not going to use it. But in telling you that, she had used it. Therefore, you were all laughing. And there is the moral of the story that you can't even, that even she was using it. So you actually had multiple <laughs> ABTs built yeah. into each other in this little framework. So I imagine you've worked on that quite a bit on that. Story. Well, I don't even have to because it, it was so blatant, obvious when it came out. Here's how people would normally tell that story. So it is narrative in the way I told it because you have and, but, oh my God, contradiction, solution, therefore. How often though do we all catch ourselves It'd be like, you know, I was teaching the ABT to this group of veterinarian sales and marketing persons. And there was this lady by the name of Sarah there. And she was one of their chief writers. And she didn't really like the ABT very much. And in fact, she said she's not going to use it because she's a journalism, ma journalism major. And she's going to keep writing the way she always did. And then I just started laughing. And I looked around and nobody else was laughing. And then I asked myself, I wonder why they're not laughing. And then I figured, oh, they didn't get the fact that she used an ABT to explain why she's not using an ABT. And then 
when I told that to them, they all started cracking up. And then we all had a good laugh. And I think that's just a great example of how the ABT works. So what did I just do there? I and, 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 anded you to death. I never got out of exposition. It was act one all the way through. And after about that third and the limbic brain is like, God, when is he going to get this story over? But then feel the difference when you said Sarah showed up and she said she's a journalism major and she could see the power of the ABT, but she's not going to use it because she feels like it's too stilted. Therefore, she's just going to keep doing what she's always been doing. And I go, whoa, wait a minute. <laughs> You just used an yeah. ABT and you didn't even realize it, you know, but you didn't even realize it. Therefore, you can see how powerful it is. Everyone got a big laugh. You can just feel the difference. You take yeah, those which, hands out. You get one hand, maybe two, but try to do it with one hand and then get to that butt and deliver that butt bomb because that what it is what excites that limbic brain. Oh, my God, we got a problem here. How do we solve for it? And then you share the solution and you're there for it. Which, which is so in, so important to understand it's about the we need the conflict the conflict is what makes the story what makes the narrative yeah no conflict but, no story right but to create the conflict we need to first create something that can create conflict so in the form of marketing this would be you want this <laughs> and if somebody's reading that and they're like no i don't then the rest of what you're saying will not be for them. Because if you're talking about, hey, you want the smoothest legs in the world, and I'm looking down on myself and I'm going like, oh, that's not about me. <laughs> then, <laughs> then you can create the best conflict about smooth legs that you, wanna, that you can create. It's not about me. And it doesn't really interest me. But if it's something that actually grabs me, like you want to use storytelling in your business or you want to you wanna understand how to position your business better, yes. But, and this would be how I got to the ABT, but all the business storytelling stuff you've looked at before is super complicated. And you're like, what am I supposed to do here? Therefore, you need a simple approach. Then I'm in because I'm like, yes, I want that. Yes, I've seen this conflict. And oh, there is a simple approach. I'm interested. I don't fully believe you because all the approaches I've seen so far are very complicated. Mm -hmm. But I would like a simple approach. <laughs> <laughs> well, it builds that narrative intuition and it gets you out of being a non-narrative communicator where you're and, and, anding your audiences to death. And when was the last time you were bored into buying anything? Non-narrative communication is boring to the brain and it will totally turn you off. So that's where that butt is. And you can, <clears throat> now that they know about the ABT, listen for it. And all I have to do is listen for the butt. Uh, but uh, however, yet, whenever I hear one of those pop in, my brain automatically goes and rewinds and said, how'd they set that up? Oh, yeah, there's their contradiction, and here's the way forward. And the other thing about that, Lucas, is, is if you build enough conflict or, or uh, yeah, conflict contrast is the word I'm looking for, between your and statement of agreement, that positive shared vision, and that but statement as to why you don't currently have it because of what problem you build as much conflict between those two as possible in the contrast, then your audience will give you all day for you to explain your solution because you've, you've triggered that problem solution, that problem solving limbic brain saying, okay, what do we do next? And then if your, your, your uh, solution makes sense, of course, they're like, where do I sign? Let's go. How, you know, when do we start? Yeah. So, so with that, I would love to see, so most of the people in my audience are small business owners, coaches, therapists, consultants, body workers, that, that kind of sphere. But most of them hate marketing. <laughs> they, they don't like it. They, whenever they try to do marketing, they get stressed and it feels unnatural for them. Therefore, one of my questions I have around this is how can I potentially find something that is doing marketing without having to think of it as marketing? Because I think a, a lot of this, the hurdle is thinking of marketing as this sticky, yucky thing that people yeah. do. And I'm actually thinking, if we can help people think about 
their marketing as what's the story you're telling? Could that be helpful? And how could the ABT potentially help people that are struggling at exactly that point? Yeah, well, a great question. <clears throat> the first thing I would say, Lucas, is don't think about it as marketing. Think about it as sharing successes, sharing wins. You know, all of us in the Homo sapien species wants to understand how can we get better, you know, at, at our lives, in our minds, with our bodies, with our businesses or whatever. And if you, you being your, the listener the audience here, you've got a proven product or service that is really helping people, then don't sell, just go out and help. And you can help people through quote unquote marketing by simply sharing those success stories. Share them from the point of view of your audience. What do they care about? What's, why is it important to them? And here's, here's a way to first set that up. Here's a little exercise for your audience to think about this. So we're going to change your marketing to story moments of success. That's all you want to share. Just the, the impact you're having on the world. I mean, you don't have to be selling that. Just share it. And people are going to recognize it like Adelante Healthcare did. And they're going to come. So when you're setting that up, I want you to think of an audience, a single audience, not talking to everybody out there. Who is your core audience? I always like to think of the Pareto principle, if you've heard of that, which means basically 80% of outcomes comes from 20% of inputs. Another way of saying that this is true throughout nature, throughout business, throughout relationships, 80% of your business comes from 20% of your customers, which means really that 20% is the group you're looking for, that club, that individual persona that represents those 20%. So ask yourself, who is that in your world? I want you to place them at the center of the story. What do they individually want relative to your offering? And why is that important to them? But why don't they have it? What is standing in their way that you can help them solve? Therefore, help them picture what that tomorrow is going to look like if they just come and do this with you or buy your product or service. You first get that set up in your ABT in your mind of what that focus message is going to be for this piece of story marketing, if you will, and then go out and tell a story that shows that in action, like I did with Sarah, the writer. In this case, you're going to expand an ABT into the five primal elements of a short story, which actually becomes an anecdote, but not a cheesy, schmaltzy anecdote like you were, you know, uh, repelling against <laughs> earlier, Lucas, but just a quick little true story that makes your point for you. And you want to tell it in this order. order. When did this moment happen to a customer of yours? Be as specific as you can. Was it yesterday at 10 a.m.? Was it last Tuesday? Was it the summer of 2023? Was it July? Be as specific as you can. That triggers a limbic brain saying, oh, something must have happened because I'm getting a timestamp and I better pay attention so that I can learn what I would do in case it ever happens to me. That's what we believe happens. It triggers that listening uh, <clears throat> apparatus inside. Then you give a location. Where did this happen? And throw in a couple, two, three little descriptive words. Is it inside of a gym? Um, was it in, you know, during the fall at one of your offices? Whatever. You want to fire up the theater of the mind now. So you've got a timestamp when it happened to, to alert the limbic brain. Then you have a location stamp that fires up the theater of the mind so your audience can picture what you're talking about. Then you introduce your singular character. Not two people, not a team, not a group. It's always about one individual that your audience can live vicariously through. That's basically the and setup of your uh, your short little anecdotal story. Time stamp, location stamp, central character, and what is it that they are wanting to achieve that, that is de demonstrated or illustrated in this little anecdote. Then you get into the action, which essentially is the butt section. You know, they went out and tried this and it didn't work. And then they tried that. Now it was a failure. But then they did this. And oh, my goodness, it would have this surprising outcome that makes your business point for you. That leads to that aha moment. So that's how you've now used the ABT to set it up in your mind, getting focused on that singular narrative, that singular problem solution you're going to share a story about. 
let me tell you about Sarah. So, you know, last fall, da -da -da, you know, and then you take them on this surprising little story. And at the end of that, you've made your business point and you've used these two narrative frameworks to be able to make that meaning make sense in the limbic problem solution buying brain. Um, and that's how I like to use it. And so I don't think about sales and advertising and marketing anymore. I talk about story moments or story marketing and just share the stories of the positive impact you're having in the world. And that will attract the kind of business you're looking for. So this would, this would mean if I, if I tried to make this even, even simpler, this would actually mean rather than thinking of, Oh, I'm trying to sell myself or I'm trying to, which, which by the way, Americans, and you, you, you have a great advantage over us Germans in that we, we are so incredibly averse to that. And I think Americans are always selling themselves. That that's, a, that's something you culturally have that we just don't have. Um, but <laughs> But basically, Good old Yankee spirit. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, so, so basically, rather than thinking of that, it's it's about I'm telling a story, and I'm telling a story about the kind of people that can benefit from what I have to offer, and I'm telling this story about them. In what do they care about? Mm -hmm. Why 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 do they come to me? Like, what do they want out of this? Hey, I'm a massage therapist, and. It's for people who have busy weeks and who just need time to for themselves. And if they can really uh, have that time to come down, uh, their weeks are so much better. But it's almost impossible to find that time. And that's why I offer this service where after you come home from work, I will come to you bringing all of my essentials with me and you will get the most wonderful massage in your own home without having to make extra time. And just last week, this would be then getting to the anecdote. Just mm -hmm. last week, I uh, I went into the middle of the city up this incredible high rise, going up the elevator. I knew, oh God, people here living here, you should probably have a lot of money and very little time. I got uh, led into this uh, apartment and there was Steve and Steve was there. He'd had one hell of a day. You could tell that he was beaten up. But after just 60 minutes of some nice touch, he felt as good as new. And since then, I've been seeing Steve twice every other day and his life has turned around. So <laughs> that, that, would yeah. be, that would be, what do they want from what I have to offer? And mm -hmm. what's one anecdote about that? Mm -hmm. That would be kind of that framework. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, I got all fuzzy there on you for a yeah. second here. Let me see what's going on. Oh, that's that's very nice. You could maybe zoom there in a little go. more. We're back. <laughs> <laughs> that was very weird. It just went. Burp. Um, yeah, exactly right. And all I would do is add a little bit more specifics to your story. There, um, you go. I love the fact you're going up a high rise. How far are you going up? I mean, I went up to the twenty second floor. You know, beautiful condos that overlook you know Munich or whatever. And and you know, I loved how you said you know these are probably wealthy people that don't have a lot of time. And even though they may have all this money, they probably have a tremendous amount of stress they're dealing with. That was the case with Steve. He was a stockbroker or whatever, or he was a high flying financial analysis <clears throat> analyst. And he was young guy. I mean, he was in his forties and he looked in good shape, but he confided in me that he's been having heart palpitations. And as doctor said, Steve, life is getting, you know, you, you, you're letting stress eat you alive. And so this was his first step into massage therapy in that respect. And he was kind of doubtful, but he thought he knew he had to do something different. And that first hour I spent with Steve was amazing because you could just feel his body collapse and just relax into that whole thing. And when he got done, you know what? He booked me for the very next day. It even surprised him, that little imp impact that that had. That's what I want to bring to you, you know, that kind of thing. So I would just throw in a little, just a, a few more sp uh, specific points because the power of story rests in the specifics and you're really wanting that audience, your audience to picture it, fire up the theater of the mind, just as if they were your assistant and they walked right alongside of you. They were a part of that, or they now would become Steve and they can feel that, you know, like, oh yeah, I've, I've had that same experience before. You know, so 
Yes. So you start it set up with an ABT. That's that narrative intuition at work for you. And then you share a little anecdotal story that makes, oh, man, I'm coming unglued here. Maybe I need, yeah. I need someone to come and give me a massage. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh-huh. I mean, I mean, and this could be an Instagram post with, with a, Excuse bless me. you, with a, with, with a, with a picture out of the high rise. It could be something like that. And this could be, a true because we all know steve and me we had a wonderful uh massage uh, appointment there but uh, it's true it's actually it's not cheesy if done well yeah. and it's a and it's a natural way to communicate what you do without having to think of it as oh god how do i sell what i do yeah I just had an ABT delivered to me today with a guy that's never been taught it. Maybe he's listened to my podcast. I don't know, <clears throat> but he wrote me, his name is Nick and he just came out. I, I think it would just kind of came out of him naturally, honestly, but there it was. And he said, uh, I'm Nick. Jerry referred me over. I've got a new book out and I'm so excited to share it with the world, but I don't know how to tell this story. Um, therefore, and I, I don't think he said, therefore he said, so, um, so I would love to talk to you about some consulting to help me understand how I can better tell this overall story. There's a perfect ABT. <clears throat> he has a very positive way, you know, future ahead of him. He's got this new book and he can't wait to share it with the world, but here's the problem he's solving for, but I don't know how to tell that story. Therefore you come highly recommended to help me tell the story. Can I jump on a call and explore what that, you know, relationship would look like? There it is again. And now that people hear about the ABT, you will start seeing it in the world all around you. It's pervasive out there. It's been hiding in plain sight. And you just never realize that this is the preferred way we homo sapiens limbic brain loves to communicate with each other. Yeah. That's a very nice quote. You just never realize that this is the preferred way that we communicate. With each other because no one's ever told no one ever told me until i first went over to hollywood following in my son's footsteps to understand what story structure and story patterns actually look like and then taking that very complex world of the hero's journey and having it taught to me as an and but therefore through dr andy olson who by the way is a harvard phd evolutionary biologist who gave up his science career went to usc film school graduated produced three documentaries on climate change and global warming, but now has written about eight books, nine books, teaching scientists how to use the ABT to simplify their complex messages. And so that's where, boy, if it comes from an evolutionary biologist, a USC film school graduate, that this is the core to screenwriting, I believe him. And then when I see it in the world all around us, it's like, yes, there it is, hiding in plain sight. I just want all of you to evolve basically from an intuitive storyteller, which all of us homo sapiens are, we are intuitive storytellers, to being intentional, using these frameworks, especially in your leadership and organizational communications, where we tend to default to nonlinear, blah, 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 data, 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 logic and reason, when what your audience really wants is the emotional pull of a story beginning with that framework of the end but therefore and i think that's a wonderful place to end this conversation thank you very much park lucas thank you so much hey by the way i am going to be out in munich about in one year it's at the very <laughs> beginning of october for october fest uh, my wife and i are coming out on one of these rick steves tours um through bavaria we can't wait for it it ends up in munich And I would love to talk to you about maybe we could host a big workshop for your customers and your listeners and whatever in person right there in Munich, um, teaching them the ABT and our other frameworks so that they can use it to become more confident, compelling, persuasive communicators. And let's talk about that. And if you're coming in the beginning of of October, this is the the part that most Americans don't know. Oktoberfest might might be just coming to its end like october it be- is. ends at the beginning of october americans yeah. always think it starts at the beginning of october. they've assured october. us that we will be there for the last weekend of october <laughs> they assured you that you can pay a lot of money for beer 
<laughs> well, I can't wait. October. I don't have a. I don't have a very long bucket list. I just enjoy life as it is. Uh, but I've always wanted to go to Oktoberfest, so I can't wait. It 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 is it's it's a. I've never been. I've been to to other Bavarian, um, festivities. Let's call it that. Uh -huh. But if it's anything like that, it's going to be a very wet, <laughs> a very wet <laughs> <laughs> event. Well, I grew up in Seattle, Washington. It's kind of wet up there too, so I'm all in. Well, probably a slightly different wet than I was thinking about. It's a lot of beer. <laughs> I, that's what I, I imagined. So thank you very much, Park. All right, Lucas. Thanks for having me. You never, you never know what's around the next